hello, hello, hello. Hey, Elliot. Uh, hey, Saba, if, you, if you're able to put a, um, a description, I had forgotten to do that. Single save, Van Dion. Oh, Lord. Got married, folk watching. <laughs> uh, if you're able to put a, a description, single saved and sexual. Uh, come on in, everybody. Good to see you all. Apologize for the delay. We're going to go ahead and get started shortly. Devo! Bishop Cousins is in the room. Who else we got coming in here? I see Kirk. Greetings to you all. Excited to be sharing with you all. The Wakanda SDA Fellowship. I trust that we'll have a good time. Open, honest conversation, dialogue. Uh, be free, be, be open, be real here today. Just give us one more minute. Just gonna make sure everybody gets a chance to get on here. Hi, Claudette. Hi, Didiella. Hope that's how you say your name. Indeed. I'm coming in from Cleveland. Where's everybody else coming from? I'm locally here. Where's everybody else joining in from today? Can I see the comments? Hey, Garrison. Yay. All right. Well, wherever you may be. We thank you so much for tuning in. I uh, want to give a shout out to Saba, especially for creating these opportun opportunities for us to have dialogue, um, for us to just be able to be open and honest about different things that we are going through as Christians. And uh, I really appreciate this forum, this environment, this through technology where we're able to share. Um, and then I also want to give a shout out to Noah and Lola who have begun our journey as it relates to talking about relationships and navigating relationships, navigating our sexuality. They did an awesome job, had a chance to check it out, and they gave some awesome words of wisdom, nuggets of wisdom from their perspective. And I am honored and a little nervous, <laughs> but honored truly to be able to share with you another perspective, another um, journey um, as it relates to being single, being saved, and loving sex, loving God, loving your singleness, but also wanting to honor in God as well. So I invite you to just to join in on this perspective, join in on this journey. I think we can all learn from each other and grow together um, and then go from there. Again, my name is Pastor Kimberly Bulgin. I am the worship pastor at Grace Community SDA Pastor. We're the Myron Edmonds. Dr. Myron Edmonds is our lead pastor. Regina Johnson is our administrative pastor, being all churchy. Pray for us. If you're ever in the Cleveland area, come on and join us. Um, you know that you would, you'll enjoy it. So let's go ahead and get started with a word of prayer and then I'll jump right in. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We honor you. We thank you so much for loving us as we are. Um, we thank you for being with us throughout every step of our journey. And I just pray now, Lord, as we spend some time talking and getting to know each, each, each other um, through this journey, I pray, oh Lord, that you send your Holy Spirit to lead and guide this conversation and somebody will be encouraged, that somebody will be challenged, that somebody will be set free today, oh God. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, here we go. So, um, for those that don't know, I do have a podcast out called Wild Worship, and uh, yesterday I dropped a podcast speaking specifically about worship and the single worshiper. Like, how do how do single people who love God navigate their sexuality in such a way that still provides them the freedom to worship God as they are, and not a way that has any condemnation, no guilt, no shame, but they're able to worship God freely. And I want to share just a few nuggets from that as well, and then open up the feed for any questions that you may have uh, for me as a single woman in her 30s who loves Jesus, who loves serving the Lord, but also has real desires, real urges, gets horny often, like how do I navigate, how do I deal with, how do I honor God and still manage and live in this tension? I mean, the reality is part of the reason why this is such a major topic within Christianity is because as we know, 
the people are getting married at a later age. In the 60s, people were getting married in their 20s, people were getting married in their teens. But now research shows that the median age for marriage these days is like 29 30s or you know so it's getting it's like a lot later which means that a lot of christian men and women a lot of bible lovers a lot of singers of hymns and praise songs um are living in this real life tension of managing their sexual desires um learning how to live with the fact that they're not having sex and wanting to have sex which by the way is a normal very normal extremely normal desire to have even in your 30s and your late 20s and the other problem also is that there's like this major level of condemnation major level of um, guilt that comes f on both sides of the coin like people are feeling some type of way for repressing their desires and people are also feeling some type of way for just straight up giving in to these desires i mean if we haven't if we don't know for those of you that just don't know maybe you're living under a rock but if you are christian if you are a seventh day adventist christian and you love the lord and you're a young adult chances are it's not unlikely it's very actually very likely that you are are having sex like that's just the reality like sexual activity amongst the people of God is a real thing so we need to be talking about today I hope that somebody will be set free um, and how they manage that I want to go to the book of first Corinthians chapter 6 just as our, our, our uh, foundation for what we talk about today first Corinthians chapter 6 and it says all things are lawful for me but not all things are helpful all things are lawful for me but not all things are helpful and I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach and stomach for the food and God will destroy both one and the other. The body's not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. I'm gonna stop right there. I mean, you can read the whole, the whole chapter. It's pretty, pretty intense, but that alone I think is powerful enough. And when I used to read that text, I used to get very, very, um, felt very sad really and um, ashamed because of my story. And I felt like this is not um, speaking to me because I'm somebody who has not necessarily always been um, on the sexually pure side, but God has been able to restore. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But I would look at that text and say, man, this is not for me because I'm out here struggling with my sexuality and it's not, it's not pleasing and honoring to God. What I want to first say to us as single people, as men and women of God, it is okay to jump up and down and scream it from the rooftops that you do love sex. It is okay to scream it from the rooftops that you do love sex, that you want to have sex, that you do have sexual urges, that you do get horny, that you do get wet, that you do get hard, like, oh, what, Christians? that are single have these things that are happening to them absolutely and that includes people that have had sex or have not had sex whether you have or haven't these physiological responses these hormonal responses that our body has is going to happen regardless of where you are in your spiritual journey and i don't know if people are commenting or not but for whatever reason i'm not able to see it i'm hoping that if you are because i do want to hear your perspective i do want to be able to um to talk back with you all. So I'm hoping that eventually I'll be able to see if anybody's commenting. But yes, I want you to understand that, man, because you are a sexual being, like you are going to definitely experience those types of urges. But here's the catch. Here's the thing that I want us to grab as Christians, as Christian men and women who are single. Yes, we do love sex. Yes, we do get hard. Yes, we do get wet. Yes, we do get horny. Yes, we do want to be in a relationship, but we have to receive the truth. We have to embrace the truth and live out the truth of loving God more than loving these desires, choosing to love God more and choosing to live within that tension. And I said tension on purpose because it's not easy. It is definitely a tension and I'm living it right this moment, living in that real life, hardcore tension of, uh, of wanting to love, of not even wanting to, loving sex, like naturally loving sex, and also wanting to love God even more so than that. And so for those of us that want to honor God, my perspective that I want to offer, my it's part of my journey, and this has always been my journey, that I'm still on a journey towards being pure and faithful. Uh, but what has helped me specifically 
the first thing is choosing not to put my sexuality in a separate space and putting my spirituality in another space. I know for sure there was a time in my life where I just honestly was gonna just be real and say, Lord, I just wanna do this. Like, I want to have sex. I want to live out these de desires. I want to explore them. I wanna just, in however way I felt like doing it, whatever felt right to me at the time, whatever felt, um, uh, you know how sometimes we bargain with God, we'll say, you know, let me do this let me do this aspect of my sex sexuality. Let me live out this aspect of it and not go all the way here, but let me just do this and then God will still be pleased. God is saying, no, no, no. Don't, let's not put our sexuality in separate boxes. Let's not have two different bags. Take your sexuality and put it in one bag, the spiritual bag, and let God be the one who is Lord even over your sexuality. Let God be the one who is in control, who is able to help manage your sexuality and let's not put it in a separate space that um, he doesn't have any say or any control over. And if we're honest about his singles, if we're honest, I mean, I, I mean, okay, let me, not, let me not put my experience on you. If I'm honest, there have just been seasons where I'm just like, I'm doing me right now. I'm just gonna do me. And God would rather us be honest about where we are and what we're doing than trying to be something that we're not. So I would encourage us, please, as men and women who are single, to choose to put our sexuality in a space where we can be honest with God, very honest with him and allow him to navigate and help us through that journey. The next thing is also to make sure uh, that we allow our sexuality not to be something negative in God's presence, but to actually be something positive, to be something that God can use to his glory, even in our singlehood, something that could push us into a deeper walk with him, something that could push us into a deeper understanding of his power and his strength. You know, I think a lot of times we limit God's power. We limit God's strength to certain uh, to other aspects of our life. But for whatever reason, I, maybe because sexuality is so personal and sexuality is so real and sexuality is so normal and expected and sexuality within our culture today, especially, it's just like what we do. I think sometimes we think that God is just not able or God does not want to or we just don't want him to be powerful in that area but i'm learning in this journey and i mean i just i don't i don't have all the answers and i'm not an expert but i know i can say with confidence that when i choose to let god be god in this particular area of my life he does show up and he does show out he doesn't take away the desires he does not take away the urges he does not take away the cravings. He does not take away the horniness. I'm not here to talk about, I mean, maybe, maybe he did that for you, but that has not been my experience. He doesn't take these things away, but he promises that his strength rises up like a strong, mighty tower and manages those desires in such a way that they are not um, a negative thing in his presence. And I'm challenging us as single men and women of God, if you are struggling like me, if you have your moments of sexual weakness, trust the promises of God that he says that his strength is actually made perfect in our weaknesses. I mean, let's talk about that, single men and women. Do we actually believe that God's strength can manage our libido? Do we really believe that God's strength can manage our hor horniness and the times that we just want to grab a vibrator and just get to town? Like, do we really believe that God can can give us the strength to resist those things? Or are we of the mindset that because it's natural, because I'm in my 30s, because I'm single and have desires that I need to carry those things out? I think the challenge for us, and again, I say challenge, like in a capital C, H-A-L-L-E-N-G-E, the challenge for us is to truly every day, sometimes every moment of every day, every minute, every hour, choosing to believe that God is going to be with us and carry us through that thing. As I get towards the end, I'm going to give us some practical tips. And then lastly, and then I want to hear from y'all. I don't know why I can't see your comments. This is bothering me. Um... Maybe I'll go on Facebook on my phone, on my computer, and I'll see them. The last thing is, please believe that your sexuality is a gift. It's a gift. It's a gift. It's like a wrapped gift that God has given you. Not something that should be considered a curse, even if you're 34. Even if you're 25 and not 
married. Your sexuality can be considered to be a gift because it's an invitation for you to get to know the love of your savior all the more. It's an opportunity for you to take your sexuality, take everything that's within you and say, Lord, here I am. I need you to help me with this. I need you to walk me through it. It's not a curse. It's not something that you're throwing at God. Like, why did you give this to me? It's an opportunity for, t for you to take all of who you are. I think that's a better approach to healthy sexuality than... I see your comments now. Yes. Um, I see. I think it's more, um, it's a better approach to healthy sexuality to see your sexuality as a gift and not a problem in the eyes of God. I think within Christianity, Christianity needs to apologize to single people in general that has made our sexuality to be something that is bad, something that is inappropriate or something that is um, a problem because we're not married. Honey, if you take that horny issue, if you take that orgasm issue to the Lord, it no longer becomes an issue. It becomes an opportunity for God to show up and show out in your life. That's what it becomes. And then you get, I mean, look at it like this. You get a picture of God that a lot of people don't get to see. You get to, you get to boast on the glory and the power of God in such a way that not a, a lot of people get an opportunity to do. Like it is so countercultural to live in the power of God, to live in the presence of God, to worship God through your sexuality. Like it is so anti-world. It is so anti Cult, what the world is saying for us to do. Like you get an opportunity to really big up the name of the Lord when you choose to bring God into your sexuality. And I think a lot of us as Christians, for whatever reason, and we could talk about it, we're just not willing to give God that access, to give God that level of glory because we want to get that glory. We want to fulfill those urges. And I'm speaking as a single person who's dealing with this right now. Okay, I'm not coming at you. I'm not, you know, this is... <laughs> This is, this is real, real, real life. I'm going to go to some of your comments and see what y'all are saying. Okay, so I see there's some questions in here about what's off limits and what's not. Okay, so let's talk practicality. I saw it's a vibrator off limits, <laughs> which I guess leads to more like dealing with masturbation and, and all those things. So again, I'm speaking from my personal experience. I'm speaking from my journey i'm speaking from my perspective and this is what's helped me when god is lord over your sexuality he is going to take you on a journey where he becomes lord over all things i will be honest and say that there have been there have been moments in my journey of sexuality where god has given me space to become closer to him and how that looks for me is going to be different for you. The question that I would like you to consider as you can, as you're navigating, managing the tension. And I know Adventists, you know, we love, we like, we love checklists. We love to do or not to do. We love black and white. We love yes, no, no. What God desires, are you ready? He desires relationship. He desires come talk to me. He desires intimacy. He desires communication. He, this is what he desires. He desires you to say, hey, Lord, I'm thinking about getting this vibrator. Uh, Lord, I'm thinking about like carrying out this um, horniness that I'm feeling right now using my fingers. He does like that's what he wants from us. And I don't know. I think I think Christianity has done us a disservice in making God so so sanitary like you can't have those kind of real conversations i mean take it all the way there with him men and women of god if we're going to survive this if we're going to manage this tension you're going to have to be that real and that open and let god speak directly to that specific need and he will tell you what you need to do he will tell you and the question that has helped me in, in as i'm navigating managing these tensions in this particular season of my life, somebody needs to write this down. The action that you're asking about, this like, should I or should I not do this? Should I, should I have oral sex or not? Should I masturbate? Should I get a vibrator? Should I just not have sex at all? These, the, when you were asking these questions, the question you should be asking yourself is, will this action draw me deeper into isolation from others? Is it going to draw me away from God? 
Or is it going to bring me into a deeper connection and intimacy with God? Is the vibrator, let's, I mean, let's just go all the way there. Is the vibrator, is the vibrator, this is not a vibrator, I'm just using it as a prop. Is the vibrator going to bring me into a deeper connection with God? Or is it going to bring me away from intimacy with God? Is it going to bring me into a deeper isolation away from others? Or is it going to give me an opportunity? Is it going to bring me away from others? Or is it going to bring me closer to others? Is it going to prepare me for marriage? Or is this somehow getting in the way of preparing me for marriage? Whatever this is for you. <laughs> Saints of God, this is, this is, this is hashtag living single, okay? For real. This is the single woman speaking to other single women and men. By the way, single women, um, have issues with, um, masturbation just as much as men. Okay. It's not just a man thing. It's definitely a woman thing. Is it going to bring me into a deeper relationship with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Or is it pulling me all the way back? If it's pulling you all the way back, then you know what the answer is. Like, that's just, you know what I'm saying? I think as a single person, I am guilty of trying to find grounds for committal, grounds for a way to do what I want to do and still please the Lord. Saints, God has to either be God or he's not. <laughs> yes, I pulled out a pot. Yes, I did. Okay, so... I mean, that's, that's, that's what I have on that. Now, for those, so now in these moments of practicality, immediately a lot of people go into like straight condemnation. Like, I've used the vibrator before. Oh no, like hellbound is my answer. No, it's not. It's not, you're not hellbound. Sex is not the important part of sin. Grace is available for you to keep yourself together. And grace is also available when you mess up. Grace goes both ways. I am the pastor of Grace Community. Grace goes both ways. Grace is there when you fall and grace is there to keep you from falling. It's there. We just have to make, I don't know. I blame the enemy. I blame the enemy for making, for making God so ethereal, for making grace so, so like out of reach. Honey, if you are swimming in a pool of sexual desires and sexual sins, there is an ocean of grace available for you to take a dive in. If you're willing to, there is an ocean. There's what, that's what the song says. If grace is an ocean, we're all sinking. I mean, we just need to go ahead and just start sinking in that ocean of grace as single men and women of God and just allow God's grace to keep us and allow God's grace to, to carry us through those moments when we do fall. Because it's, a, it's likely that you have fallen or you will fall. Whether you actually carry out the act of having sex or you carry out the act of having sex in your mind. By the way, especially when it comes to masturbation, the act of masturbation, I don't even think is the issue. The act of masturbation when it's tied to lust in your mind is the real big, is the bigger issue. God isn't even, God doesn't even care so much about our actions. God is more concerned about your thought life. So if you're thinking about A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then you desire to carry out that action, you know, that's, that's, that's the tension that God wants to deal with. Why are you thinking about A, B, C, D, E, F, G and not thinking about me? It always comes back to relationship. It always comes back to relationship. God just wants to have a relationship. It's not just the married people he wants to have a relationship with. He wants to have a relationship with everybody that's single too. Yeah. That's real. I feel so overwhelmed. Okay. So grace is available. If you have vibrators right now, I'm not going to tell you to throw them out, but I am going to tell you that God's grace is available to navigate and help you through this process of becoming more closer to God. Um, if you have a black book of people that you call on when times get rough, I'm not going to tell you to get rid of your black book, but I am going to tell you that God's grace is sufficient to help you through whatever decision that you decide to do. And trust me, God, God's grace is so powerful that it will cause you to repent and turn your face towards him. 
That's what that's what the grace of God is for. That's what it's there for. I'm not I'm not the one that's gonna tell you what to do and what not to do. You're not gonna hear that from me. Cause I mean, reality is you're gonna do what you want anyway. Okay? You grow. You're gonna do what you want. But if you love the Lord and if you want to serve him, he's not gonna leave you hanging. He is going to direct your path. You just need to acknowledge that he wants to that he wants to help you. There was something else I wanted to say about making decisions. Oh, yes. If you're going to make, I am Claudia. I'm overwhelmed. This, I'm like, I'm, I'm literally pouring. I'm pouring my heart out. I feel like y'all are pulling on me. Y'all need to get this. I want somebody to be set free. I want y'all to live a healthy sexual life. Um, the, the reality is, so if you're, if you have your vibrators and if you have your, if you have your partners that you're dealing with, you, you having sex with, with Brother Smith at church, this is real. Um, please know just, you can't have your cake and eat it too. Like there are consequences that come with that, right? There are, there are, em there's emotional baggage. Sex was not meant to be something that you do and throw away like, 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 like garbage. Sex was meant to be the glue that keeps you together. So if you are having sex with somebody that you intend to throw away eventually anyway, saints of God, that is, that's not promoting healthy sexuality. If you are in a monogamous committed relationship with somebody and you're not married yet, for those of you that are like engaged or you're like seriously dating somebody, exclusively dating somebody, and y'all are having sex, y'all are, or y'all having, you know, you're messing around, you're Netflixing and chilling. My advice to you would be, again, to really embrace what the gospel means for you in that relationship. Embrace what God's grace means to you in that relationship and really grab hold of that and live that thing out. So for if you are dating somebody and you guys are... Um, in a real relationship, what does God's grace mean for you in that? Does that mean that because God's grace is real, y'all going to just be messing around and just ask God for forgiveness every single time? Or are you going to choose to believe that God's grace is sufficient in your weakness? Because again, if your relationship is honoring and pleasing to God, I would hope and pray that you would lean towards allowing God's strength to be made manifest allowing God's strength to give you to give to be made allowing God's strength to be glorified in your relationship not brother smith y'all have any other questions <laughs> cc don't kill me what else can we discuss um uh, what is happening so yes for those that are in relationships um uh, let's talk about boundaries okay you have to know you have to know you have to know yourself, okay? So when it comes to sexuality, I know myself in the sense of I know my hormonal schedule, ladies. I know my physiological self. I know when uh, a horny urge is literally just rooted in the fact that I'm PMSing or like I know that kind of urge versus... I'm just lonely or another, like you have to know yourself. I know for me, especially, I don't need no brother calling me when I finish preaching. When I finish leading worship, I don't need, I don't, I don't need it. I don't need it. I don't need you around me in those moments because the vulnerability for me is so I can't explain. Those of you that are in ministry know what I'm talking about. Like you are poured out and you just want to be poured back in. So for me, you have to kind of know, you have to know yourself. So a lot of people, date nights for them probably will be like Saturday night. I have to be mindful that a Saturday night for me may not always be the best thing, especially if I've had a full day of ministry because my likelihood to fall into some sexual sin is on like 10,000 because of what I've just experienced that day. Like I'm tired, I'm emotionally sensitive, like I just poured out my whole life. And if you just like put your arm around me, I just may fall out and just go all the way. Like you have to know, you have to kind of know your cycles. I know like if I'm PMSing, like, like don't, don't, no, I may not need to be watching Insecure. I may not need to be watching like Grey's Anatomy or whatever those sexually charged shows are because I'm just aware. Leave me alone. 
Claudia. Like, don't, don't call me. Like, I gotta, I gotta go find something else. I may go hang, I may have to hang out with girls. Like, I just, you know, find something else to do on those days because that's real talk. So you have to know for yourself. And if you are going to go into, if you are going to go on a date, if you are going to hook up with a dude or a girl during those highly sensitive moments, then you do need to check in with somebody. You do need to hold yourself accountable if you're going to be serious about living out this walk of being pure. Because some of us, we don't want to. But if you're serious about it, then you need to let somebody know. You need to check in, check out, and let them be like, okay... I'm about to be here. I'm trying to be back at this time and let them, you know, have that permission to f check up on you, to call your phone, you know, um, so that you're being true to the word that being true to what you're trying to do as far as um, living out a healthy sexuality. I hope these <laughs> scandal. Yeah, I hope these things are helping. I hope these are practical tips to navigate the tension, the real life tension of being single. And wanting to be saved and living for Jesus. Know your body. Know your body. And just like, just like um, uh, when you're like trying to lose weight and you know that you get particularly hungry uh, around, like you particularly want to snack around like late at night. And so you're trying to lose weight. So you will intentionally not have snacks around or certain things around at a certain time because you're trying not to engage in those things. You have to approach your, approach your sexuality in the same way. You have to kind of set up rules and boundaries for yourself so that you're able to protect yourself and actually live out the, the plan that God has for you. And you know, you know what that is. For some people, you're able to watch Scandal and it doesn't affect you. For other people, you watch Scandal and it's like a porno for you. You know who you are, okay? Some of y'all can't watch Insecure. You just you you shouldn't be watching Insecure because it sets you all the way off. And between you and God, you're gonna have to work that out. You're gonna have to work that out for yourself. Yes, Tiffany. Yeah, single single folk. I think a lot of us have accountability partners, but we don't we don't engage them. We call them when we're done. That's not what an accountability partner is for. We call them before. Let's call them before saints. Let's start utilizing them for the glory of God and not, uh, not as a placeholder, okay? Let's start utilizing them to the glory of God. Been there, done that, have the t-shirt, okay? Accountability partners are real. Let's start utilizing them. Okay, so do you have any other questions? Yes, please know your triggers. Know your triggers. Have an accountability partner. And then also this. Please believe that even though you're single, you do have the capacity to love. Like love is not off limits. Just because you don't have a man or a woman to love doesn't mean that you're not capable of loving. I mean, you just take a walk out into your circle of influence and there are tons of people who are desperate for love. It may not be um, Eros love. I'm not trying to say go, go out and start a cuddling ministry. What I am saying though, is that allow God to show you who you should be loving in this season. I think sometimes because we're not loving the way that we want to love, because we don't have boo, bay, we don't have Facebook official, um, we feel like our love is only like, it's not good enough. Um, I have friends who have foster kids. I'm not saying you need to do that, but just giving an example of how they have been able to pour love into people that are needing of love during their season of singleness. Uh, I have people that are volunteers that, that, uh, participate in different activities that are able to, um, foster that loving, you know, I want to be able to help somebody. I want to be able to care for somebody. I want to be able to be there for somebody. A lot of your family members, they don't know love like they should be because you're out here desperate for love from somebody else. Start, start pouring into the relationships that you do have. Start loving the people that you have in your life already and allow that love to fill voids that um, are in your life. Yeah, no cuddling ministry. But just... Um, Choose to love. Love is not just reserved for husband and wives. 
even in your 30s, even in your 20s when you're single, you are allowed to still extend love and give love in healthy ways to other people who are thirsty and dying and desperate for somebody just to love on them and to be there for them. Get over yourselves and in the thought that your, your love is only reserved for like a covenant relationship. Claudia asks, what does it look like for Christ to keep you from masturbating? Like, I know he can keep you, but even the moments he does, your girl is drained like it's crazy. What does it look like for Christ to keep you from masturbating? Okay, so in my experience, it looks like me eventually falling asleep. It looks like me putting on you deserve it and just like going into major worship and I mean major worship like like loud obnoxious like praise as a weapon of spiritual warfare against this sexual urge that is trying to take over my life um sometimes it's as simple as just making a choice and sticking to that choice and white knuckling that choice Sometimes it's calling somebody and just calling to talk. Sometimes it's reading my Bible. But I would say nine times out of ten, I just end up falling asleep. <laughs> yes, yeah, sing you deserve it, not I deserve it. Some people take cold showers. That doesn't work for me. That makes it worse. But I think... I always go back. I don't know why weight loss works for me like that analogy. Because uh, e eating is a real desire, right? Like you have to eat. So usually what they say when you're trying to lose weight is that you don't ignore the craving, but you replace the craving with something else that's healthy. So if I'm horny and I want to masturbate, rather than choosing to give in, I choose to do something else. That doesn't necessarily... Uh, get rid of it, but at least it redirects the energy somewhere else. Because I don't believe in I don't rep I don't believe in repressing. I don't believe in God take it away. I believe in redirecting the energy back to God. I believe in carrying those desires and saying, "Lord, help me. I need you to help me," and just really believing that God's power will come through, and allowing Him to redirect. He may send you to a book. He may lull you off to sleep. He may give you a movie to watch. He may put somebody on your heart to give a call to. He may tell you to go work out. He may tell you to get up and cook. He may tell you to go and clean your house. He may tell you to do a myriad of things that you should be doing instead of masturbating. Then you now have a choice to believe that God has given you that idea and then choosing to act on that idea. And then when you don't decide to act on that idea, you choose to masturbate instead because some of us have done that. Believe that God is able to forgive and repent and trust that God is able to, you know, walk you through that journey. And then the next time we just choose to do better. No condemnation here. Conviction, but no condemnation. Um, yes, BC, fasting is very important as well. I think fasting has a way to, to bring everything that's at a 10, bring it all the way down. There are some things that only come out through fasting and prayer. What about us as men? We struggle every day as visual creatures. Where did it go? Where did it go? We struggle every day as visual creatures. So I think what he was saying, I lost it. Um, I'm not a man. So maybe the next person, Saba, it needs to be a single man. Because I think they can probably speak specifically to that even more so. I think... I think the same thing applies, but I'm sure it must be like on a completely different level for men. If there's a man on here that wants to speak to that. Um, again, it's true. It's, it's making a decision. And I think it's, it's all starts in our minds and our thought process. What's happening in our minds needs to be more pure thoughts. You know, the things that I think about, things that are good is what Philippians says. Things that are just, things that are holy, things that are pure, you know, th be thinking on those things so that when, uh, images and visual stuff comes through hopefully the enemy won't have as much to utilize to 
get you to focus on those things because you will have a, a mind that's full of stuff that is pulling you away from giving into those visual, visual, um, visual thingies called woman bodies. I think that's, that's what's helpful. Um, but I'm sure men can speak more on how men can navigate just all the stuff that's happening. And I think it's fair enough also to say men, like, it's okay to look, right? We're not saying that you, you have to be walking around like this all the time. You know, that's, that's unrealistic. I think it's fair to say that women are beautiful for a reason. We, are, we were meant to be, to behold. We are beautiful. Like, there's nothing wrong in acknowledging that a woman is beautiful and acknowledging that a woman is pretty. I think that's a healthy, that's a health, that's part of healthy sexuality. I think it's choosing not to be, go beyond acknowledging that the Lord is indeed good. And I think it's, it's choosing to acknowledge that yes, she is fearfully and wonderfully made and you just keep it and just keep it moving. Like there's, there's nothing wrong with that. There's no reason to feel condemnation or to feel ashamed about acknowledging the glory of the Lord that is revealed in the bodies of women. <laughs> That's 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 my two cents, okay. And like likewise for men, for women as well. Like, there's nothing wrong in just saying, "Yeah, he looks good," and we're and we're off with the rest of our day. I think the issue is he looks good, and I want it, and why it's his number, and just like taking it to a whole nother level. Like, there that doesn't need to happen. What other questions do we have? The look once, the second look kills me. <laughs> yes, I appreciate you all. This has been very good. I trust that this has been helpful. I think the overall tips um, that I want to leave you with is worship is powerful. Your spiritual life is a powerful aspect of your sexuality. Don't separate your sexuality from your spirituality. They're both very much connected. Yes, it's very, very helpful. Because sometimes, you know what happened? I don't know how to say your name. Lindley? Lin, Lin, I don't know, because it's so true. I'll, I mean, this, the urges will be on 10, and I'll be like, why? Where is this coming from? And then my cycle will start, and I'll be like, oh, okay, that's why. You know, and then you don't feel as bad. Licking lips is also not encouraged. That's funny. Anyway, um... Just a couple things before I let you go. There's a few books that I recommended on my podcast that were very helpful for me and I want to recommend them to you as well. And if there are any books or resources that have helped you, please throw them in the comments. Let's help each other. Any books, any podcasts, um, any resources that have been very instrumental in helping to manage, manage the tension of living, your sex, living out your sexuality, please share them in the comments. I like to read and I'm sure others as well. Uh, the first book that's helped me a lot is Sex and the Single Girl, Sex and the Single Girl, Dr. Julie Slattery, Get Lost, Your Guide to Finding True Love by Dana Gresh, Boundaries, Boundaries in Dating, that's by Dr. Henry Cloud, that's been very helpful, and then Thirst by one of our own, Dr. Wesley Knight, Quenching Your Deepest Desire, and then just this one just came to be. Jason O'Rourke has a book called Sexu Sexuology. I don't know if he's still, he's still selling them, but I believe if, if he's on here, um, I see your question, Kevin. Um, I think that's a great book as well. I'll say the books again. Sex and the Single Girl, they're all on Amazon. Get Lost, Your Guide to Finding True Love, Boundaries in Dating, and then Thirst, Quenching Your Deepest Desire. Okay, BC, yeah. If you can reach out to him, Sexuology, that's a really good book as well. Kevin Brown asks, do you think sexual sins, do you think sexual sins are more prevalent now than then? Um, when you say then, are you, what are you referencing? Because when you read your Bible, <laughs> sexual sin was that <laughs> was real. Okay. I think, thank you. I think that, um, sexual sin has been here since the beginning of time. I don't think. I think that people are maybe a bit more open with it. It's not as it's not as backdoor. It's very much a lot more prevalent. Um, but I also think that there are. What I do appreciate is that in 2018, I think that 
there's a bit more freedom to talk openly, like forums like these, um, to talk about sexual sin and to help people through it and to, you know, acknowledge that it's not the end of the world to want to have sex. You know, these are things that are um, real. I think that's also been helpful in 2018 as well. Like 10 years ago, <laughs> 10 years ago, you think I could have this kind of conversation right now? Are you kidding me? My dad is a pastor. This would be unheard of. You think I could be this open and honest at AY 20 years ago? So <laughs> I think there, there has been a bit more of a freedom to be able just to really let, let's deal, let's, let's talk about this thing for real. You know what I'm saying? But I think sexual sin has definitely been, <clears throat> has been, has been here since Abraham. So I think we're good. All right, friends, if there's no other questions, I hope that this has been helpful. Please, 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 all of you that were here, do me a few favors. Uh, this needs to be shared because if it has blessed you, you know that it's going to bless somebody else. Okay. Some real helpful nuggets were shared here that people need to hear. And then do me a favor, head over to Wild Worship Podcast and subscribe to the podcast. And those of you that are interested in getting more free and wild in your worship, head over to KimberlyBulger.com, K-I-M-B-E-R-L-Y-B-U-L-G-I-N.com and download the free, 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 free ebook on Wild Worship. It's going to get you all the way together as it relates to worshiping God with everything that's within you. And the books, again, are Sex and the Single Girl, Get Lost, Your Guide to Finding True Love, Boundaries in Dating, Thirst, Quenching Your Deepest Desire, and the one I just added is Sexuology by Jason O'Rourke. Share it, share it, share it far and wide. Everybody needs to know that your sex is okay and loving God is what we're trying to do here. And um, feel free to inbox me as well if you have more questions that are of a personal nature. I promise I won't spread your business. We can talk confidentially. If there's more things that you want to talk about, I'm more than happy to share and just learn and grow together. And find yourself an accountability partner. In Jesus' name. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We honor you. We love you. We glorify you for what has transpired in this last hour. I thank you for every single man and woman in this fellowship, Lord. I pray a special blessing over each one. I pray for the Holy Spirit to just empower them, Lord, that you give them that boldness to live life that is counter cultural to the ways of this world, even in their sexual life. God, I pray for every man, every woman that is struggling with sex, even on today. Lord, they have plans to carry out some plants, carry out some sexual stuff, even this week or, or even tonight. They, I pray, Lord, that you send your spirit in such a powerful, real, tangible way to meet them where they are, not with condemnation, but with conviction and with love, Lord. I pray, oh God, that you continue to give us the desire and the strength to turn away from stuff that so easily possess, possess, besets us. I pray, oh God, that you help us to choose you each and every time. Father, help us to recognize, Lord, that you love us, that you love us and give us a desire to love you back because the honest truth sometimes is, God, that we don't want to love you the way that you deserve to be loved. There are days where we just want to love ourselves and we want to love other people, but God, give us that desire to love you first above all things. I'm praying especially, Lord, for every woman, every man, God, that has had sex before and they know how good it feels and they want to go back to that life. Oh God, I'm just praying for your strength to cover them, God. May you just stand up in their weaknesses, Lord. I'm praying for every virgin that's on this call that have, that's never had sex before, but they're having struggles with purity, Lord. Would you speak to their needs? Would you, God give them the Holy Ghost boldness to go back to you with every need, every desire? God, I'm just praying for a pure generation of young adults. I'm praying for a pure generation of men and women, oh God, that will rise up and be who you have called us to be. And finally, God, I'm speaking against the spirit of fear and the spirit of doubt in our young adults, Lord. If there, if there are relationships that do need to be started, I'm praying, oh God, that you give us the, the desire and the boldness to make these things come to pass and not to be wallowing in this valley of decision, but to go forth in the spirit of the Holy Ghost and make these decisions to, to bind, to, to come together as, as couples so that we don't have to keep struggling in this, in the, in this, in this season that we're in. If there's, if there are couples that need to come together in 2000, 18 do it god for your name's glory for your name god we want to see people just live 
to your name's honor and glory. And for those, God, that you have no plans for them to get married anytime soon or at all, I'm praying again, God, that you send strength, that you send power, that you send peace, Lord, that you just send, send your anointing in their lives so that they can experience your power in a mighty way and they can stand up in the gates and testify of your goodness and of your glory. We love you and we thank you for all these things. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. See y'all later. Next time, hopefully we'll have a dude. All right. God bless y'all.